Hello, this is Pilot Steve with the first annotated version of one of my videos made while flying. Just to give you a little background, I'm just a private pilot. I've been flying for 30, 35 years and uh, never was in the military. Just decided to learn to fly on my own. What I thought I'd do is, uh, for those of you not familiar with general aviation, is to go along with these podcasts or video casts is to kind of give you a little narration of what's going on and give you a little perspective of what general aviation is like and what we have to do to uh, fly and uh, just real quickly here that's the takeoff roll I've already done a run up and I'll explain that in, a, in another uh, video cast but, uh, the particular plane I'm flying, which is a Corvallis Cessna 400. Um, we have a rotate speed of around 80 knots, so as soon as I see 80 knots, I pull back on the stick and bring the nose up, and if everything's working right, we take right on off. And uh, here I took off to the east, and uh, had a traffic landing, so I was trying to get out of the pattern fairly quick. So. Uh, my course was back to the northwest, so turned to the north and then to the northwest. And you can see I'm going over some real nice homes and a golf course area here in Gulf Shores. And trying to get high as quick as possible so I don't give them too much noise going over. Uh, at about 400 feet, I have the flaps in takeoff position, which is all the way down. There's two stops of the flaps, landing and takeoff and uh, come on up to a normal position after about 400 feet above ground. And when I do that, I have to lower the nose just a little bit and let the speed build back up. And at this point, I'm probably doing about 120 knots and climbing out. This particular plane can climb at 1,500 to 2,000 feet a minute, probably best climb, but I normally uh, try to find a happy medium and climb out at about 120 knots. Um, I'm not going up very high today because this is a very short flight. So just a few minutes crossing the Mobile Bay and uh, landing at Brooklyn downtown airport. Pilot Steve back again. This is an early morning flight, so the uh, summer haze hasn't built up yet, and the visibility is quite good this morning. And I'm coming up on what's called Weeks Bay. If you uh, look at a map and look at Mobile Bay on the eastern shore, on the eastern side of the bay, there's a little inlet, and it's called Weeks Bay, and it's uh, more of a nature sanctuary than anything. And um, when I was a kid, we used to come up there and ski a lot. There was a place called uh, Lulu's, which was a uh, small eatery on the shore there. And uh, at some point, the state decided they didn't want an establishment that uh, served alcohol on state reserve property. So Lulu's moved to Gulf Shores, and it turns out that uh, Lulu is Jimmy Buffett's sister. And she built a very, very nice place on the industrial canal in Gulf Shores by the Gulf Shores Airport, which is where my plane is based. And every now and then, Jimmy Buffett's known to drop in and give an impromptu concert. And of course, by the time everybody gets on their cell phone and texts their buddies and whatever, there'll be two or 3,000 people there in no time. But it's a lot of fun. 
Anyhow, you can see Weeks Bay here, and then off of Weeks Bay is a river called Fish River that uh, has a lot of homes on both shores and, uh, over in Baldwin County, Alabama. And we're progressing on here. I'm probably, I don't remember, but I think I'm about uh, 2,500 feet today. Uh, I'm traveling westbound, so we try to keep our altitude at an even altitude, two, four, six, eight thousand feet. And then I'm what's called VFR, visual flight rules, which means I don't have a instrument flight plan file. And so under VFR conditions, which is today, you can see it's severe clear, uh, we stay at it going westbound. We stay at an even altitude plus 500. So 2,000 for westbound plus 500 for VFR. And that kind of gives us some separation for, from the IFR traffic, which goes at an even altitude westbound without the plus 500. So they would be at 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, whatever. And uh, when I talk about general aviation, I'm normally talking below 18,000 feet. And in most airplanes, below 10,000 feet, because we fly what's called a normally aspirated engine which means the higher we go, the less air there is to mix with the fuel in the piston engine. So the power decreases as we go up in altitude. So most general aviation planes don't fly above 10,000 feet. In my case, I'm, I fly a turbocharged airplane, which means that the power uh, stays pretty much the same all the way up. I can go all the way up to 25,000 feet. And uh, I'll explain more about that at another time. Uh, we just passed over the Fairhope Airport. It just went by below the, the bottom of the screen. And uh, the Fairhope Airport is fairly busy. Um, it has a maintenance facility owned by Teledyne Continental Motors, which is one of the main aircraft engine manufacturers in the world. There's only two main ones. One is Lycoming, the other is Continental, and they're based in Mobile at the Brooklyn Center, which is where I'm getting ready to land. They operate a maintenance facility at the Fairhope Airport, so a lot of people fly in and have their engines overhauled and replaced or just worked on at that facility. And they put you up at a very nice resort hotel uh, operated by Marriott at the Point Clear area in Baldwin County. So a lot of people fly in, stay at the resort for two or three days, and then fly out with their new engine. Now I've sped up the video here as I cross Mobile Bay so that we can get across a little bit faster and you don't have to watch just a bunch of boring water going underneath. That island that you see right there is man-made. That's where most of the construction that goes on in Mobile when they have leftover debris and concrete and sand or whatever they bring it out to the middle of the bay and dump it in that island. And also the uh, Mobile ship channel just runs up the middle of the bay. And you can see one of the boats heading out there. Quite a bit of port traffic. And at the top of your screen over there uh, is Dog River, which is one of the main rivers in, in Mobile. Uh, a lot of homes on it. And we're coming up here and starting my descent. You can see the shadow of the plane. And now we're back to normal speed and getting ready to land at uh, the Brooklyn Airport. This is a leftover World War II airport and the runway is two miles long. Solid concrete, four foot thick and 200 feet wide. So. Uh, this is one runway that I can land on halfway down if I need to. Almost can land on it sideways, it's so wide. So uh, I know where the turnoff is coming up, so I usually land a little bit long so I don't have to taxi so long and uh, get on down and, and get off the runway. And uh, so I've landed and on my roll out, just this point I had flaps all the way down and uh, as soon as I touched down I raised the flaps which kills some of the lift on the wing make sure the plane doesn't bounce back into the air and I try to stay off the brakes in, in general aviation small airplanes one of the first things to wear out of the brakes so we try to uh, 
keep the yoke back, keep pull the nose up. Once we know we've landed, not going to take back off. Uh, pull, put the flaps up, kill the lift, pull the nose up, and that's our aerodynamic braking, and that works real well. I, I very seldom touch the brakes until I get close to the end of the, where I need to turn off. And uh, we have what's called differential braking, uh, which helps steer the airplane. And so um, I've, I can brake by pressing the top of the rudder pedals on either side, left and right rudder. And if I want to turn to the right, I'll just press the top of the right one a little bit more. And that helps the plane turn. And it does a real good job. And uh, I've sped it back up here so we can hurry up and get through these boring taxiways. One thing new that uh, the tower does here, this is a tower controlled airport, is even at the smaller airports like this, they'll give you, as soon as you land, they'll give you taxi instructions. And the new thing is they expect you to read them back. And uh, they want to be sure you know where you're going. And all the taxiways are usually lettered, especially in the smaller airports. A through Z. Some of the bigger ones they get into the double letters, but I don't usually go to those. But you'll read back and then they'll let you taxi on your way. They'll usually tell you to taxi via Taxiway Alpha to Taxiway Charlie, right turn on Charlie, taxi to the ramp. And that's kind of what I did here. And there's nobody out here. I'm coming over to the radio shop to get a little work done. And as you can see, I found a parking spot and just pull up, and I'm here. And we'll see you on the next video.